Welcome back to the Inside Track. I'm Stephanie Rule, and our next Best in Business guest is the CEO of Fifth Street Finance, which is one of the biggest players in the buyout financing market. And he says this year we're going to see a lot of owners sell out of their businesses. Len Tannenbaum is with us this morning on the Inside Track. Now, Len, the M&A space is off 30% from its peak. What do you really think we're going to see this year? Look, it still is down a lot. And people have said we've had a resurgence in M&A activity. What I think people forget is 2007 and 2000, early 2008 were so much busier. But this is going to be the year that if you're an owner of a business and you're looking at the tax increases next year, just from the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, we're talking about the new tax that potentially could come from Obamacare, those taxes are going to hit a seller of a business. What, what kind of business are you talking about? All businesses. We're talking about manufacturing, we're talking about technology, we're talking about services businesses. Entrepreneurial owners that have grown their business to a certain size, a transfer, a generational transfer. You know, and, uh, a person who's grown their whole business and the son really doesn't want to take it over and they need someone else to step in. Private equity, perfect place for, to fit in there. But for you, middle markets is the space and we've seen the big banks move out of middle market lending. Why do you think it's the sweet spot? I think that's right. The big banks, Basel III, big encouragement for the big banks to get out of middle market lending, focus on investment grade securities, focus on securities where they're going to get better leverage. That's going to create a void in the lending to middle market. Also, the middle market CLOs, 2007, 2008, they're hitting a liquidity wall. They're running out of their investment period. And these seven times CLOs are not going to be raised again. So you don't think we're going to see new CLOs. So where's that capital going to go? Middle market space? Well, hopefully in our sector. We're a business development company. And, and really what we do is lend to the middle market. Us, Aries, Penn and Park. We're all within this realm of alternative lenders. You know, walk us through what does a CLO mean for the average investor? What is a CLO? So what, what, the way to really think about a collateralized loan obligation or a CLO is a super leveraged vehicle where you put up $100 million in equity and you get $700 million of debt. And S&P and Moody said that parts of those debts were rated AAA, AA, and single A. So it allowed the banks to lend to the safer parts of the debt structure while allowing $100 million of equity to invest $800 million. And what you want to do is lend to these companies that are mid-sized, that, that the big banks aren't looking at. But in what specific sectors? What do you like this year? So we're, we're lending a lot to health care, but we're being very careful about health care because of the Medicare Medicaid potential uh, cuts, which we may see from the government. We're lending to technology, technology services. You've seen the Facebook uh, IPO. This is definitely the year of a tech company. This is the year of tech uh, spending. It's also the year of tech services. Then what is the Facebook IPO going to do for some of the smaller tech businesses that you look at? See, that's really, that's a, that's a great question because the, what, what Facebook and all the tech companies are doing is buying the best of breed technologies once they raise the capital from the public markets. So what you're going to see Facebook do, and you already see companies like OpenX just bought a little company called Lyft DNA. Who's OpenX? So OpenX uh, is another one of these tech companies, not public, that wants to be public at some point. And they buy a little company uh, called Lyft DNA that just has the technological edge, even only for six months. And they buy in that technological edge, which is advertising to like a Bloomberg, web, uh, Bloomberg site, uh, quickly putting that ad on your website. How about private education? Obviously, education companies have been a really big focus in 2011. Do you want to be in that space no, now? No, I'm really nervous. I think that's an easy cut for the Republicans and Democrats. The Pell Grant program has grown to $68, $70 billion. What happens when that's cut? So I'm a little bit scared of private education. Where else do you want to be? Obviously in the high yield space, is there a certain sector you love this year? I, I personally like manufacturing this year. Uh, I really was starting, we at Fifth Street Capital, if you're going to start investing in infrastructure companies and home building, believe it or not, services companies. We believe both home buildings get a bottom, of, yeah, we think in June, but more importantly, the Tappan Zee Bridge is falling apart. They've got to fix it. <laughs> I mean, Democrats, Republicans, they're going to get together one way or another after this election, and we're going to do massive infrastructure spending. And how does the deleveraging you are seeing in European banks affect what you do? You know, I, I don't think they're expanding their balance sheet. You're already seeing some sales of assets. Uh, Bank of Ireland sold a lot of assets. You're seeing BNP Paribas start to delever. And that's a good thing. And I think Europe's managing it very well for right now. They're adding liquidity. They're doing what we do. Well, following our big day with Facebook, we'd love to have you back soon to talk about the Facebook fallout and what's happening with some of these smaller tech companies and what they'll be doing with Fifth Street. So thanks again to Len Tannenbaum, Fifth Street's president and CEO.